Ever wonder how hackers can turn your favorite games into their personal playground? Whether it's seeing through walls, instant headshots, or even teleporting across the map, we're pulling back the curtain on game hacking and revealing the sneaky tricks hackers use to dominate the competition. And trust me, it's crazier than you think. But before we jump in, hit that like button and subscribe if you're ready to dive into the world of hacking. Let's go. Before we start, I need to point out that this video is for educational purposes only. We do not condone hacking or cheating in any form. Hacking violates game terms of service and can lead to bans or legal action. Play fair and stay safe. Okay, let's get right into it. Have you ever seen something like this in your game? One moment, you're sneaking through the map, and the next, boom, insta-killed by a player with pinpoint accuracy. That's not just skill, it's code injection at work. This is one of the most powerful hacks out there. But how exactly does it work? Spoiler, it's more than just changing numbers in the game's memory. Stick around, and we'll show you how hackers take control of the very code running your game. To understand how game hacking works, you first need to know about memory editing. Imagine your game's memory as a massive library, and each address in that library holds a different value, like your health, ammo, or speed. Hackers use tools like Cheat Engine to scan and find these values. Think of it like searching for a needle in a haystack, except this needle gives you god mode. Here's the crazy part. Once a hacker finds the value, they can change it to whatever they want. See this health bar? One quick edit and bam, full health forever. But it doesn't stop there. Hackers can also freeze these values. Meaning, even if you take damage, your health bar stays maxed out. And it's not just health, speed, jumping height, even ammo counts. Anything that's stored in memory can be changed in real time. But memory editing alone is just a starting point. Advanced hackers take it to the next level. So so, how do hackers go from infinite health to game-breaking hacks like aimbots? This is where code injection comes in. Think of code injection like sneaking a virus into the game's brain. It's not just about changing values, it's about changing the game's behavior. By the way, if you're serious about real hacking, I've put together a powerful cheat sheet covering the most popular tools, complete with commands and examples on how to use them. You can grab your copy from the link in the comments. Check it out and let's dive back in. When you move your mouse to aim, there's a chunk of code telling your crosshair where to go. By injecting their own code into that spot, a hacker can hijack the game's aim function, making it snap directly to the enemy's head. That's why, even if it seems like you're hidden, they always know exactly where to shoot. But that's just the start. With code injection, hackers can make the game do anything they want. Fly through walls, teleport across the map, or even delete objects in the game world. Imagine turning off collision detection and walking straight through walls. Crazy, right? But it gets even scarier. What if I told you some hacks are so complex, they completely change the game's physics engine? For example, hackers can create super jump hacks by manipulating gravity values, or even no-clip hacks that let you float through the map by turning off collision entirely. There's also a category of hacks called entity manipulation, where hackers alter how objects in the game world interact. Imagine throwing a grenade that doesn't explode but instead teleports you across the map. Let's take it up a notch. What if I told you some hackers don't even need to touch the game's code? They target something else, the data packets being sent back and forth between your PC and the server. See this guy lagging all over the place? It's not just a bad internet connection, it's a network hack called packet manipulation. Basically, hackers capture these packets and change the data inside. For example, let's say you shoot at them. Normally, the packet would tell the server you fired a shot, but with packet manipulation, the hacker erases your shot before it reaches the server. To you, it looks like your bullets went right through them. And it doesn't stop there. Some hackers use packet flooding to overload the server, creating lag for everyone but themselves. Or they use packet spoofing to impersonate other players, making it look like someone else is cheating. Imagine the chaos when you can turn invisible or crash the entire server with a single packet. But hackers can go even further. Some use network injection to spoof the entire server. This is known as a man-in-the-middle attack. Here, hackers set up a proxy between the game client and the server, rerouting all the data through their own systems. This way, they can alter every bit of communication going in and out. Want to see every enemy's position in real time? Modify the packets? Want to change the server's rules to allow infinite health? Done. It's like hacking the matrix of the game. But wait, what about anti-cheat systems? Companies like Valve and Riot Games spend millions of dollars trying to keep their games cheat-free. Anti-cheat software like VAC, BattleEye, and Vanguard use advanced techniques to catch hackers in the act. They monitor the game's memory, scan for known cheat signatures, and even look at your behavior patterns, like if you're landing too many perfect headshots too quickly. But here's where it gets wild. Some anti-cheat systems are now using machine learning to predict when a player might be cheating, even if the hack hasn't been seen before. One of the craziest defenses is called integrity checking. Here, the anti-cheat system constantly checks the game's files, memory, and even kernel-level processes to ensure nothing has been modified. If even a single byte is out of place, bam, you're flagged. It's like a security guard patrolling every hallway of the game's code 24-7. But hackers aren't backing down. They use techniques like code obfuscation, hiding their hack's behavior behind layers of scrambled code, or even even kernel-level drivers that operate at the deepest level of your operating system completely invisible to most anti-cheat tools. Some hacks are so sophisticated that they only activate when specific triggers are met, making them almost impossible to detect until it's too late. Then there are polymorphic cheats, programs that rewrite their own code every time they run, so no two versions are alike. It's like a chameleon constantly changing its appearance, making it nearly impossible for anti-cheat systems to catch. Even if a hack is detected and banned, the polymorphic version can just morph into a new form and remain undetected. It's a constant 
constant cat and mouse game, and every time an anti-cheat gets stronger, hackers find a new way to slip through the cracks. There are even private hacks, custom-made cheats that are sold to a handful of users, making them extremely hard to trace because they're never shared publicly. And there's a whole underground economy for this stuff. Some hackers sell cheats with subscription models, monthly fees for access to undetected hacks, complete with updates and support if the cheat ever gets detected. It's practically a shadow industry. So what's the takeaway? Game hacking is more than just a few numbers changing in the background. It's a full-on battle of wits between developers and hackers. From simple memory edits to deep kernel level exploits, it's a fascinating but dangerous world. If you're interested in hacking from a technical standpoint, focus on cybersecurity or game development. There's so much you can learn without breaking the rules. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into gaming tech. Play fair, stay safe, and respect the game.